balance. It's good to see you all again. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Pastor Crystal Jones, your talk show host. Uh, I know it's been a minute since you've seen me, but uh, thank God you all have been watching the show. And um, I just want to give a shout out to all of you who support the show, whether on Facebook, Sometimes I see you all in the street. Miss Rose, I saw you last week at, I believe, the Kmart. God bless you. Thank you for uh, encouraging me regarding the show. Um, I thank God for all of you who, you know, time to time you drop by my Facebook page, Periscope, wherever you see me on social media, you all do support me. And I thank God for each and every one of you. So it's good to be back again. We have a lot of new things going on here at the Crystal Jones Show. Uh, we are going to be on the high definition uh, channel now, channel 68. We have a new day, a new time. We're on Sundays live, uh, 2.30. So um, don't forget to tune in. I know a lot of you are at uh, church during that time, but you can you know, always look in and see the repeats or you know, I definitely upload them to uh, the Facebook pages so you could tune in and see exactly what's going on with the show. What are we doing? So, um, you know, we're looking forward to that uh, new channel, new time, new season, new everything. God takes us into different seasons and this is a new season for this show. So uh, we're thankful uh, we're also grateful. Today we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be honoring men in our community. As most of you know, uh, Minister Loretta Hagler was on the show, I believe in August, and she talked about her Lifeline cruise that she was doing, and she honored uh, several men in, in the month of August. And they are people who are working in the community and I must say so as well. I thank God they are men of color. So that was a blessing as well that um, God is moving in the different uh, ministries in the different communities in the different cultures. And it was so good to see these men receiving honor um, on Loretta's Lifeline cruise. So it was beautiful, it was wonderful. They're here today. You're going to be uh, meeting and seeing them and getting to know what each of them do. So that's going to be exciting. The Bible talks about rendering, you know, what's due to people and, you know, honor to whom honor is due. So we want to honor these men while they're here now, while they can see us, while we can look them in their face and they can look in ours. Uh, we want to, um, you know, see them get be honored now and not wait till they passed away and talk about how great they were. We want to honor people now while they're here with us. So that's going to be something that is very, very uh, exciting for us here at the show. We're glad to have all of them. Uh, as many of you know, Minister Loretta has been on the show several times before. She's an author. Um, her, her, my, one of my favorite books is the one that she wrote. I, I did the crime. I didn't do the crime, but I had to do the time. I think was the title of that one. And she's, you know, written other books. And we're looking forward to uh, doing other things in ministry with uh, Minister Loretta as well. Uh, we're looking forward to a book club coming through the Balanced Life Ministries, which is the ministry that the Lord has blessed me to shepherd over. And so um, we're going to be doing things like book clubs, um, many other things we're doing. We're getting into the, the area of prison ministry. We've also been involved at end of life ministry. As many of you know, um, I've been doing that at Calvary Hospital and so um, we are, the, the Lord is expanding us into uh, many areas. We also are looking forward to a tour that I'll be hosting in 2019, going to Israel. So stay tuned for that. 
We are going to be giving you information in the upcoming weeks and months of how you could participate. This is something that um, I've wanted to do for a long time. And um, we are looking to be able to do that hopefully in October of 2019. So look, you know, get your groups together. If they want to, you know, you want to participate and go with us, you can get in touch with me. You know, um, you can reach me on the Facebook page, The Crystal Jones Show, or you can reach me at my ministry page, The Balanced Life Ministries, or Pastor Crystal Jones. You all can reach me and let me know, you know, who wants to go from your ministry or your neighborhood. You know, you're welcome to be a part of this ministry when we go to Israel. Um, we're going to have some great tours. Some of the tours are luncheon tours. They're about eating healthy like they did in Jesus' day and time. And, you know, uh, the, the Holy Land tour, of course, of everywhere that Jesus walked. Um, they have a, several tours that are going to be available to us. So uh, we're looking forward to start doing these uh, tours on a yearly basis, maybe even more. But that's something that is going to be going on. Uh, between now and October of 2019. Like I said, we're going to give you an update as to uh, when we're going to start, uh, you know, preparing for it and when you can start signing up for it and getting ready. We'll give you a listing of all the things you need, your documents and things like that, when those things will be due and when we have to present those things, you know, to... Um, the group that we'll be uh, working along with. So I'm excited about that. I've always wanted to do a tour in Israel and to be able to be a host now is, um, is awesome. So I am definitely, definitely uh, looking forward uh, to doing that. There are many, many other things that we're looking forward to doing here on the show. Like I said, we're going to be doing, um, book club. The Lord has blessed me with a book and um, I'm trying to wrap it up, if you know what I mean. But uh, <laughs> sometimes having a book club helps because um, it gives you a lot of focus and direction and deadlines because sometimes we could write and write and write and write. <laughs> but sometimes we have to save that for book two or book three or, or whatever we're going to be, you know, doing. So um, I have a lot of things that I want to share with people. As many as you know, um, it's going on like a year and a half, almost two years since my dad went on to be with the Lord. So a lot has happened before that, during that time and since that time. And I'm trying to kind of put that in the book, too, even though I, you know, had some things in the book regarding my dad. Uh, before he had passed away. But um, I also kind of want to fit that in, you know, the transition uh, in life from when your father's alive and then when he goes on to be with the Lord. And I thank God that before my father went on to be with the Lord, he, you know, was able to look me in the face and say, you know, I'm, I'm a little tired now. He said, I want to go on and be with the Lord because he had been ill for like 21 years. He had suffered a stroke and he had a lot of ups and downs. He had a hard battle. And so um, I thank God that he knew the Lord. He came to know the Lord in the beginning of the struggle. He came to uh, surrender his life to the Lord and God really dealt with him in so many ways. And I always told him, I said, well, you have that name, Isaiah, you were named after the prophet. So, you know, God has got a lot in store for you. And to see the transition in his life, even during his sickness, I'm glad that uh, God allowed me to be a part of that and that I was able to, um, you know, share the goodness of the Lord with my dad during those years and to pray with him and pray over him, pray for him and for him to be even be able to encourage me because during that time, he saw me go through uh, different transitions in life. And he said, I know that God is with you. Because he said, when you went through this particular thing, 
I really was worried. He said, I didn't know how you were going to make it. But he said, but God was with you. He said, God really took you through that. So I'm glad that both of us, our lives were a testimony to one another. He was a testimony to me about sickness, how when you're at your last, you still can hold God no matter what. So um, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful um, for the Lord strengthening me through that. Um, when it came time to have to um, do the memorial for him, to have to say a little bit of a eulogy over him, that was the hardest thing I think I've ever really done in my life. And I can remember getting there to the church and uh, <laughs> speaking to his pastor and his pastor telling me, Listen, um, I understand if you feel overwhelmed, you could step to the side, you know, and and I understand you, you, you know, you're going through your grieving process. But God kept me strong because my family was there and I needed to be there for them, even though I myself was trying to, you know, put it together that he was really gone now. And so I thank God that the Lord kept me up. And he helped me. And I remember I said I had to sing his eyes on the sparrow and I had to um, encourage my family through the word, through, you know, just encouraging words. And that was the hardest thing for me to have to get up there, even though everybody looked at me like, wow, she's sailing through this. But I could tell you, it was only the Holy Ghost that held me up. I was like, God, if you could take me through this. You can take me through anything in life. It strengthened me, but it was hard. And sometimes God takes you through something that you never thought, you never even thought that you would be able to go through. You never even thought that you would even have to face those things. But God did that for me. And since then, I've gone through many transitions in ministry but God kept me through everyone. And I can always look back at that and say, if God took me through that with my father passing and having me stand up and encourage the whole church, I know <laughs> if he brought me through this, he brought me through that. Lord, I'm so thankful to you. So I thank God for that. I thank God for my father's life. You know, I thank God he you know, he, I grew up with him as my father. I grew up, he, you know, um, taught me so many things in life, even before he, ex even before he received the Lord in his life. Uh, my father would be honest with me about the things that he was going through himself. And I thank God that I had that one-on-one -on -one with him. Some, I think one of these days I'm going to write a book about that, how we used to sit down on the couch on Friday nights and just talk to each other about life. And he would be honest with me. He would say, well, you're a young woman now, so I'm kind of, you know, there are some things that I'm a little worried about. You know, he would be honest with me and I would be honest with him about the things that I was going through as a young woman. I can remember being 13 and the things that you know, I'm sure all men go through when your daughter is no longer a baby. She's a young woman and she's going through her teenage ups and downs and uh, boys and this and that and the other. But I thank God I was always able to talk to my dad about, you know, different things, different struggles in life. And, you know, I was always able to be honest. And I thank God he was a transparent man. He wasn't a perfect man. I'm not a perfect person. But God perfects me. God covers me in everything, and I strive to do better. And I thank God that I learned that even through my father. I thank God for who he was. He was a strong uh, presence in my life. I'll never forget him. Um, to this day, I think back on different things, and I say, yeah, my father told me that he was right. He was, <laughs> You know, because sometimes when you're a kid, you think you kind of got it, you know, for some reason when we're kids, we kind of think that we, we know it all or we know this or we know that. And your father tries to warn you or tell you this or that. And, you know, now that I'm older and you look back and you say, boy, he sure was right about that. You know, so I thank God uh, 
for him. He was, uh, thank God, an honorable man. Thank God he um, had his own business. He did a lot in life um, that was positive. So I thank God I had a positive black man in my life, a man that um, strived for the best. Like I said, he, he you know, came to own his own business for many years. He worked in the industry of, uh, he was very good with computers. So he would go into different banks and things like that, set up their whole mainframe systems and things like that. Very intelligent man, very, you know, hands on. So I'm very proud of him. I thank God, you know, that I had a, a father that I could um, be proud of and be thankful for. But most of all, I prayed for him for years that he would come to know the Lord. And he did. And even though he was ill at the end of his life, I, that's the most that I'm happy about with him, that he came uh, to know the Lord. He came to experience the Lord. He came to live um, a holy life in Christ. So I'm so uh, glad and excited about that. So he'll definitely be in probably a lot of my books because he had a strong influence in my life. It's funny when they had the... Um, when Loretta had the spirit life cruise that, you know, she had with the uh, gentleman that she was honoring, I thought about my father because I remember when he used to take me on the circle line uh, as a kid. And I remember I would run up and down from the top to the bottom and, uh, you know, just looking out on the deck and everything and how he thought the world of me. And <laughs> I was a little kid, you know, I was two, three years old. And he used to take me, I remember uh, between the ages of two and four, I remember he used to take me to the circle line and I'd run him crazy, run up and down the boat. And um, he just thought I was the greatest. He, he just, you know, loved me. And I thank God for that, uh, you know, giving me a father with that type of unconditional love. And then he'd take me in the city and um, I, uh, he'd give, you know, we'd sit at those restaurants and, have the the chocolate sundaes and it'd be all over my clothes all over my face but <laughs> to him that was the greatest thing he loved spending the sundays with me he loved spending the time that he could with me and just teaching me about life just teaching me about life and we laugh and make jokes and just you know we would just have a good good time a good father daughter relationship so i thank god for that but I said all of that because I'm thinking about the men who um, Loretta uh, was honoring on her cruise. And it was, it was awesome because a lot of time, uh, men of color get a bad rap as if no other cultures do bad, <laughs> you know. So whenever I can uh, honor them or say good words about them, then I'm gonna say good words because you know, nobody's perfect. No culture is perfect. The only perfect one was the one who came and walked through the streets of Galilee and walked through Israel. And we looked him in the face and still at the end cried out, crucify him. But yet he had that unconditional love for us. And that's none other but Jesus Christ. He's the only perfect person among us when he was here on earth. Can you imagine he left his throne in heaven? He left his heavenly throne just to come down here and put us back in alignment with God because man, we had spiraled so out of control. We were a mess, but Christ left his throne just to come down and save us just to come down and give us that second chance, just to come down, well, not just second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever your situation is or was, Christ is that perfect example before us. And we can run the race with patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So we're so thankful um, that we can be a part of uh, this great honoring of men. And like I said, I thank God that they are men 
of color there, the African American culture. Um, and I'm so, you know, thankful that we get to see this day that they too can be honored. So, um, this is a wonderful thing, and I'm sure, I believe with all my heart, that it's marvelous in the eyes of God. So that is what's going on here at the show. Like I said, I know you all have um, been waiting for another live show, but as you know, um, I had a, you know, a lot with my uh, work schedule. It was hard, you know, getting here for the Tuesday nights. So we've changed now to the weekend on the Sundays and um, we're going to do as many live broadcasts as we can on the Sundays. Uh, we're going to bring to you so many uh, different people that are coming. Um, next Sunday we're going to be back again because um, uh, we had to delay this show until now because there was a holiday for the last time that we were going to do this show. There was a holiday so we weren't able to come to Bronx Net. And um, next week, we're going to have uh, Miss Diane, who was here with us before. And, you know, she has that Meet Me at the Crossroads. She does this, sh um, she has this uh, thing that she does with the youth. And she does like, she has these performances and things that her youth group does. And that is awesome. So she's going to be here next Sunday, God willing. And she'll be talking about her youth. And I was looking at the, uh, she sent me the video of the things that they're doing. And it's just so different. It's just awesome. They do a lot in the arts, the arena of the arts. And many of you know, I'm in the, you know, um, I'm in the arena of the arts as well. So I just enjoyed watching her, um, her video with all these young people doing all these different bits and pieces here and there, the things that they're doing, um, just awesome, awesomeness. And she uh, will be here uh, next Sunday and we'll be filming again live with uh, Meet Me at the Crossroads is the name of her group. And also we're gonna have again, Mr. Benjamin Bridges, Mahesh, Mahesh Bridges. He'll be here next Sunday. He's going to be talking about um, health, health and wellness. You know that he's big on that. So he's going to be here talking about what they're going to be doing. They're going to be doing a um, like a live symposium, uh, I believe in Manhattan in December. They're going to have a, a, a panel like they did before, a panel discussion. Um, I po possibly I may be a part of their uh, panel discussion, depending what day that they do it. But um, I may be a part of their uh, discussion panel. But you know, he talks a lot about uh, health and wellness. They have a lot of different things that they're gonna be, I think they're partnering with um, some of the health and wellness uh, companies and things like that. And you know, his wife, Chandri, she uh, works along with him and they do a lot of things with uh, Parents Against Teen Violence. I've worked along with them in Mount Vernon and they've done things at Mandela High School and the A.B. Davis High School and, Ma and Mount Vernon High School. I've worked along with them mentoring the children there at those different schools. So that's going to be awesome to hear what they're going to uh, now be doing. So Mahesh is going to be here as well. So we're going to take a little break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk with the men of the hour. And um, we want you all to stay tuned, um, sit on the couch, put the dog on the couch and the family and y'all sit back and eat your chicken because I know you're out of church now. Eat your chicken. Let the dog get a lick of the gravy and sit back and watch the Crystal Jones show because we're going to be right back in a few minutes. So you stay balanced. We'll be right back. God bless you.
This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence, leaving in. Let your voice. This is the air I breathe. Everybody say. your word, Lord. It feeds my soul. This is my daily bread. Hallelujah. Your very word. Your very word. Spoken to me. Spoken to me. Lift your hands wherever you are tonight. And I say
your presence and I God bless you all and welcome back again to the Crystal Jones Show. I thank you all for tuning back in. We are here and we are going to introduce some wonderful people to you. But before I begin, I wanted to read to you from Romans 13 and 7. And it says, render therefore to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. So God wants us to honor mm -hmm. people, you know, while they're living. Like I said earlier, we want uh, these people to be honored, to know that they are loved and they are respected while they're here. Mm -hmm. And like I said, again, I'm happy that they are also men of color because a lot of time men get a bad rap. So when they do good, you know what I'm saying? When people do good, period. Mm -hmm. We should be in, we should definitely thank God for it and encourage them to continue on. Um, before we went to the commercial break, you know, I gave honor to God for my father who's going on to be with the Lord. But I thank God for the good man that he was while he was here, that he knew the Lord and that he did well um, in life. He was very successful. I thank God and he was a very successful father. So I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, we are going to welcome uh, Minister Loretta Hagler from Retta's Lifeline. She's here again. <laughs> and as many of you know, she had a cruise that she did over the summer. So Loretta, welcome again to the show. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me again. Oh, it's sure. my pleasure. Thank you. Um, why don't you tell everybody about the cruise? Well, the cruise was, um, I believe, to be a blessing. Um, these great men that are here that are doing things in the community and doing things in, just in life, in their churches, and, and, and just being great men. Um, um, I did, um, God just put it on my heart to, to recognize them. Because a lot of times, like you said, they don't get the, um, the exposure. They don't get that pat on the back. They don't get that chance to hear somebody say, good job. Right. You're doing a good job, Nehemiah. Stay on the wall. Oh, do, oh. <laughs> You're doing a good job, Nehemiah. Stay on the wall. You know, so this right here was just something that, that God had put on my heart for me to just say to them, you know, that I, I respect each one of you in your respective places, and to God be all the glory for what he's doing in your lives. And the cruise was just a way to bring everybody together, yes. you know, just, just come together and just have a good time, you know, mm -hmm. in the Lord, because you can still have a good time in God. That's you know right. what I'm saying? God wants us to have a balance. He wants us to be balanced. That's so, right. that, so that's what the cruise did um, on, on that. My church, uh, my church family, Christian Love Tabernacle, um, gave out an award. The um, mayor of Yonkers yes. gave out an award to recognize these men, and also my my company gave gave these men awards for you know just for for just for them being men of God, men of honor, men of integrity, men of character. You right. know, and that's a rare that's that's rare that's rare. And when you see it, you have to you have to go ahead and give God the glory for it because that's those right. are things that can only come from God. Mm -hmm. That comes from within. 
you know. So Brothers Lifeline just wanted to go ahead and be a part of something that God was doing. You know, oh, this is all wonderful. God. This is all God. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to introduce some mm -hmm. of, uh, we're going to introduce all of them, actually. So we're going to start with uh, Charles Anderson. He accepted his call as a deacon in North Carolina in 2000 under the leadership of Apostle Lemuel Spence. He moved to New York in 2005 where he met and married his wife of 13 years, Sherelle Anderson. He is the father of what? Ten children. My God. <laughs> Woo! Come on here. Come on now. Ten. Woo! My God. It says he joined Christian Love Tabernacle in August of 2007, where he continued his role as a deacon. Charles accepted the call and was elevated to elder in October of 2015. He has been head of the men's ministry since 2014. He has a passion for winning souls to Christ. His desire is to continue to help men regain their roles in Christ. Welcome to the show, Deacon. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, elder, I'm sorry. Yes, elder it's okay. now. It's okay, ma'am. <laughs> yes. So we are so glad to have you on the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Charles Anderson, Elder Anderson. Um, um, me. I'm just me. You know, I don't, um, I don't like to do what they call get deep. Mm-hmm. I address things um, and people where they're where they're at. Right. Um, you know, street ministry is a it's a love I have. Just greeting, meeting, greeting people in our church. I actually, and one of the guys on security. Mm -hmm. So when you approach a church, you know, my brother, myself, and brother Neil, you meet us first. Right. And that's my opportunity. Okay. You know, meet, greet, and just be me. That's it. You know, Beautiful. just be me. That's all I do. Wonderful, wonderful. But we want to say to you, congratulations for thank you. You know, getting the award. I know you didn't do it for the award. I know oh, no, that. No. But still, no, we want to say congratulations to you. But well, thank you, ma'am. And continue. We want to encourage you. Continue the work that you're doing for God. Yes, ma'am. Because He cares. If nobody else cares, God cares, and He sees you, and He rewards you mightily. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the next one we have is Elder Paul Fernandez. He is affectionately known as Deke. He has worked. <laughs> so Deke has worked in the Valhalla Correctional Facilities for over 30 years as chaplain. His role as inmate pastoral care and counseling representative has serviced many over the years. Elder Paul would facilitate seminars teaching Bible principles and awakening the love of God in many. Elder Paul would assist inmates and their families in transitional challenges such as performing funerals and ministering to many who have lost loved ones while incarcerated. Mm -hmm. He has also facilitated premarital counseling, amen, thank God, sessions because the inmates are entitled to marriage. Uh, he has many other things here, but being that the time is short, I can't tell of all that God has done for him. But <laughs> we want to welcome Elder Paul Fernandez to uh, the show. Thank you. God bless you. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what you do. And well, you have a, a synopsis mm -hmm. of my past, uh, but in the present, uh, I'm working with a, a core group of people uh, out of uh, Yonkers City Hall that we're dealing with uh, the homeless. Oh, wow. What's going to happen to them now that the city of Yonkers is on the upswing right. and they're being pushed from pillar to post yes. and they have no place to go. And one of my lifelong dreams is housing the homeless and housing the ex-offenders who after 30 days of being incarcerated, they have no place to go. They lose their apartment, they lose everything. Awesome. And uh, I want to be able to house them and, uh, and care for them. Yes, that's so true, because sometimes I'm, when I'm in Yonkers, I meet um, the, those who have just been let go from the prison. And a lot of them are young men, and they're 20, Yes. It's just very young. Yes, yes. And it's the transitional yeah. portion of their life, whereas uh, going from being incarcerated to the land of the free, mm -hmm. shall I say, and um, uh, they have difficulty getting back into the transitional life of being the citizen that they really want to be. Right. And they're having struggles 
and hopefully that we can do the continued counseling so that we can bring them from the struggles into the new life, hopefully the life in Christ. Well, thank God, thank God, because that's, that's something that I, I feel passionate about yes. too because yes. I see not only the young people that have been incarcerated, but those who are homeless and they have to stay in the, right. the children's homes until they're like 18, I think it is. Yes. And they're getting out and they want to do something. And sometimes they'll stop me and ask me, you know, well, yeah. miss, what should I do now? I'm 18, I'm out of the system. What about me? Where am I going to go? What yes, am I going to yes. do? And, you know, I try to encourage them, you know, uh, get yourself, get your licenses together and stuff like that. You know, if you want to, some of them, sometimes they're interested in driving bus or different mm -hmm, things mm -hmm. like that. And I try to encourage them, go ahead and get your license. And, you know, you have a chance, you know, to do well in life because right, everybody's right. not going to go in co right. to college. Well, hopefully that the, uh, the churches can get together and network and come together as a strong unit yes. to uh, provide what's needed. Our church, the Christian Love Tabernacle in Yonkers, uh, we do feed the, the homeless uh, from time to time throughout the month, and uh, hopefully that we can guide them mm -hmm. as they come. We give them the word of God, and we pray for them, and we feed them. Right. So hopefully that this is able to trigger, trigger them and their, their consciousness to be able to um, uh, come up to a step higher in life. Right. You, because you're homeless today does not mean you have to be homeless tomorrow. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you for that, and congratulations to you as well. Thank you. Um, next, we have uh, Sydney Martin, um, who I remember <laughs> from a former church. Yes, you do. <laughs> The Perfecting Faith <laughs> Church <Yes>. <laughs> that we both used to attend at one time. So uh, that's a, a great ministry. And I mm -hmm. thank God that so many wonderful people have come out of that ministry that God has blessed mm -hmm. every one of us. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for seeing you here today you. and seeing you and your wife on the boat. Because yes. I remember when uh, your wife was over the women's ministry and the different things we learned from her. But it says here that you were born and raised in the Bronx, educated at Evander Childs High School. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Winner of the w Mayor's Award for Oratory Speech and Triple C Award recipient. Um, you graduated from ba Brandeis University, Bachelor of Science. Um, you're the Martin Luther King Jr. Scholarship winner for academic achievement. Uh, you have your master's level three coaching certificate for track and field. Uh, so many different things, but what stood out for me was Minister Loretta uh, really told me about you being the 911 responder. Mm -hmm. And that struck me because that's a crisis type situation. And th that reminds me of souls. Yes. It reminds me of people that are crying out for help. They need God. They don't know where to go or what to do. They're dying. People are mm -hmm. dying in the streets, not just uh, physically, but mentally and spiritually. People are dying. But you're a 911 responder, mm -hmm. not just because of that, because of the streets, but God put you there for mm -hmm. certain reasons to help people. So. Uh, welcome to the show, but we'd like you to speak on that. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and it, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here, and it's great to see you again. Minister, thank you so much for the award. Uh, as you forestated, I am a Vander Childs graduate, and you know they've broken up the campus a little bit, so I don't know what the alumni is going to do about that. But I, you know, being a Bronx resident, I started my uh, FDNY uh, career right there on Castle Hill Avenue in the Bronx. And... Um, being with uh you know the 911 situation uh you know PTSD and uh trying to save souls from that and mm -hmm. it's long lasting it's been 17 years wow um you still suffer from that and mm -hmm. and men of color and being a fireman you really don't address counseling mm -hmm. you know there's a stigma in our community about mental True. health and firemen don't do it you you go back to the firehouse you change your clothes you get ready for the next call mm -hmm. nobody was ever prepared for this Yes. And in the black community, for you to say that you're going to counseling. Yes. Uh-huh. That's a problem. You, know, you, you get the it's sign. It's a problem. On. It sure is. But uh, God is good. <laughs> yeah. 
He um, sure is. He brought me a great wife that you know of. And, yes. And, and uh, Pastor Pepper Martin, uh, who is our senior pastor at the Destiny House Christian Center. Thank God. Out in Long Island. And I've now transitioned and in, in assisting her. I mm -hmm. used to have the most dangerous job in, in my family, but now I'm serving the Lord and I am very busy. Yes. Uh, working with a dad's program out of Rikers. Yes. Uh, we go into transition the people that are coming out to be better dads. Yes. Um, also, my, my main concern right now is working with husbands mm. that are married to women in ministry. Wow. It, it, is a, it is such a unique situation when your wife is the senior pastor and you are not per se in ministry. You right. don't preach. You don't have the title or the collar. Mm -hmm. So there is a calling, I, I believe, was no, there is nobody there to help me in the transition of what it is to be married to a woman in the pulpit. That's mm. true. So that that is my main concern right now and wow. going forward with that is helping husbands. Well, that's yeah. wonderful. That's wonderful because that's really needed because a lot of time people will say, well, man, how could that happen? He's supposed to be the one or that, you know. But for you to be humble enough to say that, okay, that's her calling, mm. but I have another calling. Mm. And my calling, part of my calling is to be able to assist her and to be able to deal with what comes along with that. Because in the church, you know, there is that stigma. First of all, we're told that women cannot pastor. You know, when I was growing up, that's what we were definitely told, what? You know, you just, you could be an usher or something like that, mm -hmm. but you could not be a pastor. And it took me a while to be able to accept my calling for pastoring because of that. So for you to come out and say that, I'm glad because that will help so many men that don't have to feel bad because you're not a pastor. That might not be your calling, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that God didn't place you with that person. Right. You know, everybody has their place. And I always tell people, listen, we, it, it doesn't matter who we are. We, Jesus is Jesus. He's the head. That's correct. That's it. I don't care what we are. We ain't bigger than him. That's so <laughs> it doesn't matter if we just all just come out here and do what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It'll all connect. Yeah, I'm still the priest of my home. I'm, exactly. I'm still in charge of my home. That's right. And, That's right. But I know my place. And, you know and, it. And God has planted something in me to still be a strong man and support my wife. Right. She, she has a calling. I, I have run from my calling <laughs> and uh, I think I've run into a brick wall because I'm actually <laughs> having my trial sermon next month. Oh, wonderful. So I can no longer run as you first say that I was a uh, track coach for 32 years and taught for USA track and field. Mm -hmm. Well, I've run out of space. <laughs> <laughs> and when God calls you, he calls you. He does. Well, thank God for you. And we uh, say congratulations to you as well. So we're going to move along a little quicker because we, we, we're kind of short on time. And we're, gonna, uh, we're going to read the biography of Sean Jackson. And he is a mentor and a motivational speaker, a substance abuse and behavioral modification counselor, a member of Yorktown Assembly of God Men and Men's Fellowship, along with Kingdom Church and Men's Fellowship of Yonkers. Welcome to the show. We can't tell all that you've done, but we are so glad to have you here. And we want to hear a few words from you as well. Well, I'm blessed to be here today with it, all these wonderful men and Sister Loretta. It's been a blessing to me and, and many other men and mm -hmm. people in the community and you as well. So I uh, have made it through a lot. Right. And... I'm blessed to have two made it mm -hmm. Amen. and share it with people who don't have to go through it. You know, God puts you through trials, tests, and it's not to break you, but it's to make you mm -hmm. That's so right. you can find yourself, that's you know, true. and the only one you're going to listen to in life that's going to tell you the truth or lie to you is who? You. Mm -hmm. So it gives you the answers. You just got to be <coughs> open to, to accept and receive them. So I, uh, I went to Monroe College in New Rochelle for substance abuse and behavior modification. I'm a case at counselor. I do mentoring and motivational speaking. Okay. I was blessed to be able to speak at one of our brother's schools here, okay. which we'll get to him in a little while. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very upstanding man mm -hmm. of God. Um, I'm born in Yonkers. Mm -hmm. I was raised in Peekskill. Okay. I, um, I do my best 
to give what I've been given mm -hmm. so others don't have to go through the pain of trying to figure out and understand what they can't. Right. You know, I come from a beautiful home. Thank God. A beautiful home. Two great parents. Thank God for that. You know, but was split up at a young age, so I know what it is to come from that and to go into having to figure out or how to be a man when you don't know how and mm -hmm. other people filling in the blanks that see the potential in you right. and the love you have and where you can be in life but where you're not so you can get there right so i was i was i was blessed i was blessed and uh i joined the men's fellowship in uh, yorktown a yorktown assembly of god from mm -hmm. a brother craig jacobs uh, okay. pastor forster was up there and they showed me so much love I didn't even understand it because the life I lived, mm -hmm. the love I was given from people was for something. Right. For them wanting something from me. Exactly. So it was, a, it was a trade. It wasn't genuine. True. Like what I knew to come from my home. You know, and a lot of people don't, children is, don't have that. That's and true. people in general. So I try to focus on the kids from a broken place. Right. You know? And that is what's needed. Today. Yes, it is. It because really they are. Is. Yeah, a lot of a all lot of, of our futures. Without them, we have nothing. That's so true. We have nothing. That's true. Well, we gotta we gotta move a little yes, bit faster. Yes, yes, yes. You are probably gonna have to come back on the show another time so that we can go further. Yes, we will. But we're gonna move on now to and we congratulate you Thank as you. well. And we have a program in the Bronx for you. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Miracle City. Miracle City. It's coming. Yes, look for it, please. Okay. Please. Definitely. Miracle City. And thank City. you again. Okay, you're welcome. Pass it on to my brother. All uh, right. So he was born February 3rd, 1983 in Yonkers, New York. Pablo Picasso began rapping at the age of 13. He was a secular artist for many years. He performed in nightclubs, concert halls, and other arenas. Once he found his way back to church and made Christian Love Tabernacle his home, things began to change. So now we're going to hear from... Pablo Picasso. You all have seen him on the show many times before, yes. but we're going to hear from Pablo. It's, it's good to be back. Um, I always enjoy coming here. Yes. And um, like you said, I'm a Christian rapper. I was once a secular artist, but um, as we all know, God has a calling on our lives, and we just have to figure it out and find it. He'll keep knocking, and you just got to let him in. Mm -hmm. And God was knocking on my door <laughs> a long time. I was fighting. I was, I was running probably in the same track as him. Because <laughs> um, for years, I was doing the secular music, and I couldn't understand why I wasn't succeeding. Mm -hmm. And I was being told I was so good. I, I was got opportunity after opportunity, mm -hmm. and nothing ever came to fruition. And I just knew eventually that... Um, that God didn't want me to have it. Right. He wanted me to use it for his glory. He gave me the gift, so he wanted to be used it for him. And that's what, what I, that's what I do now. Mm -hmm. And um, I try to have, be a voice um, for God to the youth, mm -hmm. especially the youth um, and older people. Some A lot of people are closed in and, True. and are, you know, they, they're too religious. Mm -hmm. And I think my music comes from the heart. It and does. that's where relationships grow. So I, I try to help people, you know, find a relationship with God so they can sure. they can hear me, you know, giving my testimony through my music. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just hope that it touches people in that in their heart, in that special right. place where they can let go of all the things that they had in their mind. Because I've, I've got an opposition with mm -hmm. being a Christian rapper from, you know, churches. I've approached people, no, you know, sure. I would love to come and minister to the mm -hmm. youth at your church. And they, they've told me, oh, we don't have that in our church. Uh -huh. That's not of God. I know. And, you know, I, I had to have a conversation with them, you know, and mm -hmm. which we, you know, I can't, we don't have time for me to get through it now. But, I know, <laughs> I know. But that, um, that's what I do. It's, it's, all right. <laughs> it's all right. All right. Well, congratulations to you, Pablo. We know we're going to see you again. So yes. they, they'll yes. hear your testimony. Thank you. Um, last but not least, we have Mr. Ralph Burtz, the youngest son of six, whose parents were the late Mr. and Mrs. Willie Burtz. He was born and raised in the Levester Towers apartment complex of Mount Vernon, New York. <laughs> he attended the James E. Grimes Elementary School, Washington Junior High, and Mount Vernon High School, my alma mater. <laughs> 
Mr. Burtz was blessed to receive a good foundation from his parents and has always excelled academically. Uh, his parents strictly reared their children with the belief that character, ambition, hard work, discipline, and respect were the tenets that would lead to a very successful life. Uh, Mr. Burtz, we want to hear from you today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank uh, Minister Hagler for acknowledging all of us for our, what we do in community, but we can't do it without God. Amen. Um, man gives the awards, but God gives the rewards. He sure does. I'm an educator. I've been an educator since 1981. I've been an administrator since 19 since 1988. So I'm 30 years as administrator. Okay. And I, I love children. Wonderful. That's why I work with them, and I feel that children are redemptive because mm -hmm. all of us here mm -hmm. got second chances in our lives. Mm -hmm. Got that right. And I, <laughs> I, I, you, you got to love children unconditionally. Mm-hmm. And um. I'm the proud principal of the Mandela Zalakafa High School. Wonderful, I've been there. The yeah. first school in the history of the United States that was named after Nelson Mandela. We have a letter from him giving us permission to name our school after him. And we also thought it was fitting to continue the legacy of Dr. Z. That's why you got Mandela Zalakafa High School. Okay. School's an alternative school. Um, yes. We have children who are over age and accredited. And um, we use the edict of whole school personalization mm -hmm. where we s develop, foster, and maintain interpersonal relationship with children. I'm father of many. Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Biological father of four, grandfather of four. Um, uh -huh. I just love children and I just thank God for the opportunity to work with them. Well, thank God. I'm glad to have you on the show. We've been there with our Parents Against Teen Violence. Yes. And we've mentored some of the children there. And um, I've seen the operation of the school so thank God for you, for people who, you know, are in the community and care enough and have schools that, you know, help children um, that are in different arenas in life. You know, a lot of time um, children are labeled things because people don't get, uh, you know, the, the environment that they live in and things like that. So, but we thank God that um, there are people that, you know, try to um, help children to um, excel in life. But we got to go. We're going to have to invite y'all back mm -hmm. so that, you you know, we could talk again and you have a little more time yeah. to tell about your testimony and your life. But we got to get ready to go. So thank God for all of you. Congratulations to all of you. Minister Loretta, God bless you. MC Heaven, we'll see you on the next part. There's going to be a part two. So God bless you. And you know, I always tell you, you. Stay balanced. God bless you. Not getting down with your tactics, undoctrine, no practice. Rewind, select up, bring it back. Heaven is on this track. No more games in my mind. God built me in the spirit. Division, corruption, strife, envy. No, I'm not trying to hear it. God gave me eyes to see. So glad he set me free. In his church, there's liberty. Resist the enemy. He will flee. The greatest commission, go teach, preach. Not having all this beef in these walls, killing each other. Greatest commandment, love your brother. Forgive and pray unceasingly so glad god forgave me new life and victory pure religion undefiled james fits the whole profile woe to the shepherd scatter the sheep warning jeremiah 23 no hooks or chorus part is speaking sick of the fakeness every weekend tired of the wolves trying to sneak in false doctrine real teaching true preaching we god seeking god focused resurrection trinity predestined justification saved by grace spiritual blessings in heavenly place chosen generation to eternity giving praise and all the glory i'm done Stop using church intimidation, controlling manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl. Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word, two edged sword. MC Heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware. Didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there. Not getting down with your tactics, undoctrine, no practice. This rewind, select up, bring it back. Heaven is on this track. No more games in my mind. God built me in the spirit. Division, corruption, strife, envy. No, I'm not trying to hear it. God gave me eyes to see. So glad he said.
set me free. In his church, there's liberty. Resist the enemy, he will flee. The greatest commission, go teach, preach. Not having all this beef in these walls, killing each other. Greatest commandment, love your brother. Forgive and pray unceasingly. So glad God forgave me. New life and victory. Pure religion, undefiled. James fits the whole profile. Woe to the shepherd, scatter the sheep. Warning, Jeremiah 23. No hooks or chorus, part is speaking. Sick of the fakeness every weekend. Tired of the wolves trying to sneak in. False doctrine, real teaching, true preaching. We God seeking, God focused. Resurrection, Trinity, predestined. Justification, saved by grace. Spiritual blessings in heavenly place. Chosen generation, to eternity. Giving praise and all the glory. I'm done. Stop using church intimidation, control and manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word, two edged sword, MC heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware, didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there. Not getting down with your tactics, undoctrinal no practice. This rewind, select up, bring it back. Heaven is on this track. No more games in my mind. God built me in the spirit. Division, corruption, strife, envy. No, I'm not trying to hear it. God gave me eyes to see. So glad he set me free. In his church, there's liberty. Resist the enemy. He will flee. The greatest commission, go teach, preach. Not having all this beef in these walls, killing each other. Greatest commandment, love your brother. Forgive and pray unceasingly. So glad God forgave me. New life and victory, pure religion, undefiled. James fits the whole profile. Woe to the shepherd, scatter the sheep. Warning, Jeremiah 23. No hooks or chorus, part is speaking. Sick of the fakeness every weekend. Tired of the wolves trying to sneak in. False doctrine, real teaching, true preaching. We God seeking, God focused. Resurrection, Trinity, predestined. Justification, saved by grace. Spiritual blessings in heavenly place. Chosen generation, to eternity. Giving praise and all the glory. I'm done. Stop using church intimidation, control and manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word, two edged sword, MC heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware, didn't see the game.
My mic. Will I still be able to hear the music? Yeah, we can hear music. All right, so I don't have to hear myself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be able to hear the beat down here, but not myself. They're still going to be able to hear me, just the feed down. Yeah. When? Clap your hands. TV went there. Mm -hmm. You want to be on TV? You famous. You famous. Bro, you famous? Thank you, bro. 